What's in a penny? The British Medical Association says a pret manger barista earns more than a junior doctor. The Department of Health says this is misleading. But this is about pounds, not pennies. A claim of a real terms pay cut of 26% since 2008. It's not just about the pay, but it's about the conditions that we're working in. And there's not enough staff at the moment, and we're having to handle lots of patients' care in conditions that are less than adequate. This is the first strike action by junior doctors in England since 2016, with tens of thousands walking out. Well, they're walking off to number 10 now, but it's a gesture, of course, because the government has so far failed to enter into negotiations with the British Medical Association. And on Friday night, they did at the last minute say that there could be talks, but that was rejected. This strike is going to go on until Thursday morning, and the mood is that there will be more to come. The BMA said the offer of talks had come with a number of preconditions, including suspending the strike action. But today, the health secretary reissued the invitation. Well, the junior doctors can come in and have those discussions. Uh, we are in uh, negotiation with the other health unions. We've been engaged in constructive and meaningful discussions with them. And I urge the junior doctors to do likewise, to come in to discuss these issues, but pause their strikes in order to do so. Junior doctors make up 45% of the NHS medical workforce and they range from fresh out of medical school to just below consultant level with a decade of experience. Dr Mohammad Rizwan Ahmad moved to England from Pakistan to train as a GP. He takes home between two to three thousand a month and out of that has to pay thousands in annual registration and course fees as well as his rent and food. He's on the bus because he can't afford the hospital parking. I don't think anyone will walk into the hospital and they will want to be seen by a doctor who is uh, not motivated, who is underpaid, who is in, in stress. Three in the morning, you are thinking about paying your bills and you're treating someone who, who has come with a heart attack. And we are the ones who see patients. Consultants have been asked to provide strike cover, although Channel 4 News has learned some have refused after being offered lower than the BMA rate for the extra work. This has led to rotor gaps, including in accident and emergency and intensive care. And appointments and operations have had to be cancelled. Well, it certainly seems to be the case across the country that healthcare leaders are working really hard with their staff to figure out the right ways to cover things. People are being pragmatic, people are being sensible and really trying to find those solutions with patient safety as the top priority. But it's absolutely the case that there are a lot of gaps that need to be filled. There are no more talks planned and there is the spectre of strike action with the BMA likely to ballot consultants within the next month, unless there are what the union calls meaningful negotiations. Well, joining me now is junior doctor, Dr Vasily Crispy. Thanks very much for coming in. Now, when people can't get to work because of a rail strike, there's a huge impact. But when doctors are out on strike, that has an impact on people's health, their well-being, cancelled operations. Lots of stories today about how patients are really suffering. I just wonder how you justify it as doctors in your mind. Striking has not been a decision that any doctor, any junior doctor across the England have taken lightly. It is a difficult decision because we know the impact that a current NHS crisis is already having on patients. Patients already had their procedures and operations and then clinics cancelled. If not pushed back, we're waiting a list of more than a year and a half and seven million people on the waiting list. Patients are suffering now. That's why we're having to make a stance. But the strikes will make that worse, won't they? Yes, they will have an impact on the elective procedures and clinics that will have to be cancelled across these days. And I think the impact should go to signifying the important role that junior doctors play within the NHS. We can have as few as five years of undergraduate studies, if not 15, 20 years of experience in studying and training on our back. On our back. We deliver the backbone of the service within the NHS. We're vital for its survival. And at the moment, we're short of 9,000 junior doctors in England alone. We can't deliver on any any of the promises that a government may make to patients. And I mean, one of your colleagues talked about conditions there. Just describe briefly for me what you see 
conditions wise in terms of how you're working and what the impact is on patients? Of course. On an average on court, a junior doctor, um, young or well into that profession, they might be looking after 60, 80, 100 patients at any given point. We're well, the first people that, um, first doctor that people see when they cross the AE doors. We run the investigations, we clerk them, we prepare them for theatre or any further treatment that they, they require. We're tired and we're exhausted because any time that a patient becomes acutely unwell, we don't have the resources to look after them. You're asking for 35%. You're not expecting anyone to take that seriously, are you? I think we must put into the context of the pay erosion that we have suffered. We're asking for our pay to be restored, the 26% pay cut that we suffered to be made right. Every year we work a month for free compared to the year before. Nobody should have to withstand that, let alone high skilled professionals training people's lives. I mean, we heard the Health Secretary, Steve Barclay, he says we stand ready to engage with the doctors in the way we have with other unions. It sounds like he's inferring it's you, the doctors, who won't come and sit round the table. What do you say to that? This government and the previous one have had multiple occasions since August to meet with us and avert strike action from taking place. The government and NHS employers knew that a full walkout was going to happen and they've left no fingers to avert it. Steve Barclay put preconditions on the table and nonetheless, these are empty promises. There is not a realistic pay deal being offered to us. We cannot take this seriously. I mean, these strikes go on until Thursday and NHS chiefs are saying this... These strikes, above all the other strikes we've seen within the NHS, will have the biggest impact. I mean, how much longer would you be willing to keep striking? We have a strong mandate for our members and we will continue until our demands are finally listened to. We're asking for the government to come to the table and listen to us. We're a broken workforce, we're exhausted and we cannot look after our patients. It is heartbreaking for us. We want to be able to work with the government, but they must listen to us. They must come with the table with a realistic offer. Dr Crispy, thanks very much for talking to us Thank today. Thank you very much.